It's time. We're going to be talking about where it all started, the division between psychiatry and religion. We're going to be talking about Freud's The Future of an Illusion. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome to the channel where we talk about psychiatry and religion with a focus on how to apply it to your life. Today, we're going to be talking about a really big topic, and that is Freud's The Future of an Illusion. Uh, his book, The Future of an Illusion, is Freud's criticism of religion. And since then, uh, psychiatry and religion has kind of uh, went in different directions. Prior to that, a lot of people with mental health issues uh, went to, I guess, religious organizations, institutions for help. But after that, uh, there was a big sort of fight. And then, um, the, I guess, the two never really met eye to eye after that. The book is pretty big and can be I guess, not so much dense per se, but it's going to be 10 chapters long. We're going to be talking about only chapter one, and I hope to do one video for each chapter because I really want to dig deep into it because this is, this is the beginning stuff. And it's also kind of complicated, so I'm trying to make it uh, understandable, um, and hopefully I'll be able to do that uh, for you. And hopefully it'll be entertaining as well. So let's start. The first thing that Freud talks about in The Future of an Illusion in Chapter 1 is, first, uh, what does it take to understand culture? Um, on the one hand, it, it's hard because you have to understand a lot of complex things. Uh, he didn't say explicitly, but you have to understand anthropology, sociology, you have to understand uh, psychology even, right? And, and to understand in all its complexity, it's very challenging. He said most people only really have a few passions that they're really, really focused on. Uh, if anything at all, and that is a, a challenge. The next thing is that people can be fairly subjective with their interpretation. So that's another challenge in trying to understand culture and where it's going to move forward uh, and how it's going to develop. And finally, uh, it's possible that people also, he says, have a very, uh, he said, shallow understanding of their present situation. And in many respects, I guess he's saying that people aren't very observant of their present situation let alone past situations, let alone trying to interpret the future. And then he says, uh, someone trying to understand culture will have to un be cognizant of these shortcomings or these sort of challenges uh, uh, if they're trying to do it. I guess he's implying that he, he's able to do this because he then goes on to talk about uh, the future of uh, culture or an illusion, uh, but that's just him. We'll get to that when we get to it. The first thing he does is that he talks about uh, what is human culture and he defines human culture as consisting of two parts. The first part is culture is the thing that separates from animals, that humans are able to change nature to get stuff from it. And when they get stuff from nature, benefit of nature. The second thing is that they end up distributing it among other people. And we find this true by and large, we're building buildings, concrete everywhere, we're, we're farming, we're raising cattle and, 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 and chickens, and, and then it's far more chickens than one person could eat, so then we distribute the chickens across everybody, right? And that's kind of what culture is. That's how he's defining culture as a thing that separates people from animals. All right, we're, we should be good so far. Um, he says culture is necessary, but at the same time, people inherently don't like culture. They, they are against it, right? And why is that? Well, he says that uh, the problem is that when you have a culture, you necessarily impose obligations onto people. And when you impose obligations onto people, people are naturally not going to like that. So then there's this tension between, the, you see, you need culture, humans need culture to flourish, but then you hate culture because it imposes obligations on you. So then this tension then has us create organizations, it creates laws and institutions, so that we can keep in line the, the particular people who are, let's say, very against culture uh, and would, let's say, uh, fight against it or try to destroy culture. Typically, I guess nowadays, we just call them criminals. Criminals. Uh, so then he then kind of does his thought experiment, says, how would we create a perfect culture? Let's say we could start from scratch, because one might say, hey, you know, it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to create this tension. And he kind of says, okay, if we're going to create the perfect culture, what, what would it be? Well, he would say it would kind of reduce the burdens as much as possible, reduce the obligations, and figure out which specific obligations or sacrifices we need to flourish. Okay, And after figuring out uh, which specific obligations 
uh, you need, it would then appropriately compensate people for the sacrifices or burdens that they took onto themselves. So for example, if one person worked more than another person, you would compensate them more with more chickens or something like that, right? And if you could do these three things, that's a, that's a pretty good culture. Unfortunately, it says you can't really do this without coercing people to work when they don't wouldn't necessarily want to work. And the reason is because he identifies two specific problems with human nature. The first problem is that human nature people are generally lazy. He specifically says uh, the masses are lazy and unintelligent, but let's just say people are generally lazy, they don't want to do work. And the second thing that he says that people have is that they don't really listen to reason and arguments. Uh, but, uh, and because of these things, these two things uh, at the same time, uh, people need to be coerced to do uh, work and labor for the benefit of culture, to flourish the human society, and then and all this stuff ensues. He says, you know, he kind of recognizes people might object, hey, you know, that's not human nature. We could be kind and loving. We don't need to be coerced. We could create a sort of a good body of people that are willing to uh, work uh, without needing to be coerced in some way, that they want to do it at their own goodwill. He challenges that objection by saying, that might be true, but leaders generally uh, would still have to succumb to the masses uh, to what they want, as opposed to what the leader might think is the right direction to go, or else pandemonium would have ensued. He doesn't elaborate more from that, uh, more about that, but that's uh, generally what he says. And then he summarizes at the end. So what's the big takeaway from this? Well, what are we trying to, what are we trying to get at here? Well, it's interesting to find that Freud's attack on religion actually starts off with a discussion of culture. And I don't want to like bring too much on the table. I want to, I guess, start the question of what is culture and how is culture different from religion? To what extent is culture and religion so intertwined that you can't remove the two together? And how about you? What do you practice when you're practicing culture versus religion? Uh, let's define religion as a pursuit of God or a, a higher divine being. And let's say culture is, I guess we could use his definition, the things that we do to benefit uh, society. Although I guess I would personally call, define culture another way, but I'm going to have that for another video. We do have these concepts I've heard of before. I've heard of culturally Catholic. I've heard of culturally Jewish to kind of signify that I'm doing these things because uh, culture dictates so. Um, I'm not doing them necessarily for... Uh, and there are, of course, religious aspects to it, but there's this concept where people can actually participate in certain ceremonies for culture more than for pursuit of uh, God. I've heard some people say, yeah, God might be baptized, but I'm not particularly religious, but I just like getting my baby baptized. It's a thing to do. So that's sort of an aspect uh, uh, in and of itself. So something to just think about, right? What is culture? And it's also interesting to find, again, that Freud... Um, starts off with uh, a uh, an attack on culture itself. So we kind of want to keep that on our minds for the next uh, 10 chapters. Another thing I'd like for you to think about is what is human nature? I mean, Freud says that human nature inherently is lazy and unintelligent, or more, let's be a little nicer, people generally don't want to do work if they don't have to do work, all right? That I guess I could agree with, but do you agree with that? Do you think people are naturally just don't want to do work? Because some people would disagree with that. Some people would say people naturally actually want to feel fulfilled in doing work. Uh, and that when they don't want to do work, it's because of some uh, problem or misunderstanding about things. I don't know. It's up to you. Think about that. Comment about what your thoughts are. And the second thing you said that people don't listen to reason, that they're unintelligent, right? Uh, so, uh, in many respects, ask yourself, is that true? Do people, by and large, not listen to reason? If you tell people facts and then they said, therefore, you must do this, even at their own detriment, would they generally do that? Or would they generally be, let's say, he would say, I guess, more emotional uh, in nature? Although he would also say, I guess, we are kind of working on our subconscious desires, uh, and that's kind of what drives uh, people. That's what he's saying. But, you know, you should critically uh, assess whether or not you think it's true. And if you do think it's true... I guess another good question is, do you think uh, you can sh there's a way to educate or change society uh, to make it so that they're less uneducated or uh, less likely to not listen to reason and uh, less lazy? Is there, how can we uh, create a society that is 
uh, the sort of society we kind of want to look for. So that's the first chapter. We're starting really small. We'll get bigger later. And then the last tenth one, and then there might be one afterward uh, of my thoughts. So thank you very much. I hope you like this video. Uh, do like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye. We're getting to the fun parts now. It's so cool. Aren't you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited.